Hi, and welcome back to Star Conflict Tutorials. In this episode, starting ships of all factions, their defining features, tactics, and special modules. Let's see where we can get by developing various branches of the tech tree. First things first, outside of three main ship classes, each ship has a role. This is kind of a subclass, a more specialized definition for each ship. That role defines available skills and other characteristics. There are a total of nine roles in the game, but for now let's just split these into a more basic definition of offensive and support roles. The abilities and characteristics of offensive roles are bent towards dealing as much damage as possible and living to tell about it. Support ships are meant to enhance combat abilities of their allies and weaken their enemies. But wait! Support does not necessarily mean that these ships are completely defenseless and kill no one. Oh yeah, they do. The only major difference from the offensive roles is that support classes operate from behind the front line, while offensive ships are right there in the thick of it. Well, let's get down the ship themselves. First up is the Empire. Hercules, a gunship fighter. Its main ability is Overdrive. Once activated, Overdrive provides a boost of speed, shield regeneration, agility, and rate of fire for the ship. This ability can be useful to destroy a single target in a duel, or if you need to flee from a pursuit, if the going gets too tough. This module is best combined with another, yet optional module that you can install, Aiming Overcharge. When combined, these two abilities will effectively double your ship's firepower. Hercules has a weakness though. Without an active overdrive, its speed and maneuverability are nothing stellar. Plan your attacks way ahead, or you risk running out of speed before making it back to your allies for cover. Do not try and dogfight against an interceptor either. An experienced pilot will be tight in your six and will give you no chance of retaliation. But you can do the same thing against any enemy frigate. The perfect kind of tactic for this ship is to shoot the enemies from range. If you should see a stricken enemy, now would be a good time to activate your overdrive and then hit and run while your overdrive is still active. Don't forget that outside of basic speed boost, your energy regeneration is buffed as well, so you can fly using your afterburners non-stop while overdrive is active. Dverger, a recon interceptor. This is a support ship, but capable of dealing decent damage. The ship's special ability is called Micro Warp Engine and allows to travel up to 13 kilometers in just a few seconds. You don't have to jump all that distance if you don't want to, just press either left, right or shift and up to cancel it mid-flight. So where can this skill be useful? That's right, you guessed it. In Domination, the Micro Warp can be used early in game to get to the Furge's beacon. Following that capture, you can warp in towards other vacant beacons. This ship is more than enough to fight off a single enemy. If you have met a fighter or a frigate, your speed and maneuverability will be your tools, but should you encounter a fellow interceptor, then you will have your decent damage output and good old Imperial toughness. Harpy, a long-range frigate of the Empire. Its special module is Disintegrator, a powerful sniper weapon capable of destroying enemies from up to 8 kilometers away. If you press F, you will engage the weapon's sniper sight. This gun has infinite ammo and takes just over 3 seconds to reload. The only thing stopping you from becoming a real death machine is rather slow projectile speed that requires a considerable lead to hit a target. So your primary targets will be other frigates, but once you get a hang of it, you will be able to kill even some rookie interceptors, especially those who don't watch these videos and just fly in a straight line all the time. Harpy's main weapons are six lasers that can engage targets up to three kilometers away. This is a rare case when you can forget the usual advice of firing in short sure bursts, because with a laser, you track your target while frying it to death at the same time. The perfect tactic for this ship is to stay just behind the main force of the team and constantly switch between disintegrator and lasers. See an enemy on the horizon? Get your sniper out. Did someone come closer? Now would be a good time to fire your lasers. Now onto the Federation. Lynx, a tackle fighter. Despite its support status, this craft is a force to be reckoned with. As any other Federation ship, this one is much faster than its counterparts from rival factions, so only a few interceptors of its tier can actually catch up to it. In case of danger, the Lynx has its ODG Chameleon Special module that renders the ship invisible for 18 seconds. Usually, this is enough not only to break off from a fight, but also to fix the ship behind a nearby asteroid. Once the invisibility runs out, you get a 5 second bonus to your damage output, which allows the ship to act like a backstabbing silent assassin. Get behind your enemy in your stealth mode and then let loose with all your guns, missiles and ship crippling abilities. If you like such gameplay, then this is the ship for you. There are ways of dealing with stealth, of course. The easiest way is to deal damage against a stealth ship. Therefore, if you activate your chameleon, change your heading immediately, not to get shot by an enemy thinking you will go straight forward. 
Your cloak can also be hindered by an enemy recon ship that uses spy drones against you. To get rid of those, you will need to scrape your hull a little against any kind of object or an allied ship. But you should be even more wary against plasma web module used by enemy covert op ships. Once this thing attaches to your hull, it will constantly deal damage for next 7 seconds. If you got caught in this one, you better wait it out before turning your stealth cloak on. Swift, a covert ops interceptor, favoring hit and run tactics. This little craft is capable of enormous damage, almost on par with an Imperial fighter actually, but its toughness is extremely low. The only way to survive a sortie on a Swift is to evade enemy fire entirely, but thankfully you will have all the necessary tools for that. Small size, amazing speed and good steering. Swift is truly at home doing duck fighting. It can spin around its enemy, killing it fast with its solid firepower. If the enemy is trying to flee, then you can use the aforementioned plasma web. The special module deals continuous damage throughout 7 seconds. This ability cannot be evaded or blocked. This is kind of a perfect missile for those especially small targets with little health. The web also works extremely well against stealth ships. Raptor, an engineering frigate. An engineering ship is the best kind of ally you can have out there, as it can repair hulls and shields of its teammates. A good engineer is universally loved, respected and always protected by his teammates. Even the most jaded of pilots never abandons a lone engineer to an attacking swarm of enemies. Because as you guessed it, this ship is quite vulnerable in combat and usually ends up being a priority target for the enemy. The best way to play an engineering ship is to stay behind your main forces, while using your abilities to the max and never engage in direct combat yourself, unless you absolutely have to. The weapons of an engineer are purely for self-defense, so don't test your luck. Even if you kill no one during a battle, you are almost guaranteed to come out with the top 5 players of the battle, because every time an ally kills someone while being covered by one of your abilities, you get extra points. Combat drones of an engineer are a dual-purpose ability. This is a passive skill that creates a drone every 35 seconds to a maximum of two active drones. These drones orbit your ship and attack nearby enemies. If your shields drop below 50%, the drones will cease firing and start slowly regenerating your shields. The ability can be activated to overload one of the drones, effectively killing it, but in exchange for a big increase in shield strength to all nearby allies, you included. Only the Federation has a basic engineering ship in the beginning. The Empire pilots can only get one at a higher tier, while Jericho has no engineers at all. But to be fair, the same thing could be said about any other role, being available to two factions at a time. Which brings us to the third faction of the game, Jericho. Axe, a command fighter, its main purpose is to buff his allies. With the base model, you only have a shield and hull buffs, but later models can increase speed of its allies and enhance their damage output considerably. But all these buffs are rather short, whereas resistance auras work only after being activated and use just a tiny bit of energy every once in a while. Make no mistake, your energy is your lifeblood on this ship, because it is used to activate the all-important diffusion shield module that turns your energy into an extra layer of shields, spending it instead of absorbing damage with your regular shields. While this module is active, do not spend your energy on anything else, like afterburners. The diffusion shield will allow you to survive an attack from a more powerful enemy and safely absorb return fire during your own attack. If you have lots of energy to spare, then you might possibly win a duel without even hurting your regular shields, not to mention the hull. The tactics for this one are similar to an engineering ship, well, maybe a little more aggressive. Dagger, an ECM interceptor, a pure support ship. Its role is ECM or electronic countermeasures. This is the most hated of all classes. Here's why. Its main task is to make life miserable for as many enemy ships as possible. For a start, you're given just one ability that turns off weapons and modules on enemy ships, which is huge as it is. No more torpedoes for your enemies, no more cloaks, all the interface starts blinking, nothing is working. While this is happening, the enemy is at your mercy. Later ships of the same class have even better ECM abilities. For example, you will be able to take over an enemy minefield and blow up the very same guy who planted it. The tactics for this one are simple. Help the attacking forces, such as fighters and covert ops. You can play it differently too. Your weapons and abilities are capable enough to cripple and destroy a lone enemy ship, but it will be much more effective to cooperate with your buddies and deal more damage together. As to toughness, we can say that Dagger has his among one of the best in all of its class. Its speed also makes it a hard target to hit. But if you got into a really tight spot, you can use the mightiest of your ship's abilities, Metastable Energy Generator. Once activated, first it makes you invulnerable for 5 seconds, then it paralyzes all the enemies within 1.5 kilometers from you. While the invulnerability is active, you will not be able to move, so you better use this one in the thick swarm of enemies. While enemy pilots are mobilized, your allies can destroy them with ease. 
Zealot, a guard frigate. This is a support ship that is designed to make the lives of its enemies a living hell. The base model has propulsion inhibitor special module, which can suppress enemy afterburners in active range. Higher tier frigates have a whole assortment of various debilitating effects that can be used against enemy targets, such as auto damage to all enemies within a certain radius, decreased damage to output, and even shooting down enemy missiles. Another important ability is a face shield. This device increases your ship's resistance by 150 points, but only against a certain selectable type of damage. The damage types come in three varieties, thermal, kinetic, and EM, or electromagnetic. Basically, frigate lasers deal thermal damage, fighter guns deal kinetic damage, and interceptors weaponry deals electromagnetic damage. With each activation of this module, you switch between different types of damage resistance. The color of the icon signifies the type of damage your shield is currently attuned against. Red means thermal, yellow for kinetic, blue stands for EM. This is easy to memorize because weapons have the same color projectiles to the damage they deal. All in all, guard frigates are some of the slowest and toughest ships of the game. A single enemy should not even try to attack such a big guy in space. All such a frigate has to do is enable protection against the type of damage that a lone enemy brought with, thus turning a potential threat into nothing but a nuisance, while a frigate increases its own damage by a quarter. As the tactics, these frigates are best used to suppress key approaches on the map, firing their long-range weaponry at anything trying to come closer, while using its mass depuff effect when tactically possible. Finally, there's one advice. Get to know all the ships we've listed in this episode. They're the basic representatives of all roles and functions that you'll be seeing throughout the entire game, no matter the tier. These ships are cheap and easy to learn. Even if you will play just one or two classes constantly, the experience with these ships will give you an idea of how to deal with whatever enemy is in front of you. Thank you for watching Star Conflict Tutorials. See you around.